Hello everybody, Laszlo here. Welcome to the final video in the uh, Block Breaker series. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build the rooms, how to place the objects in them, how to duplicate rooms, and I believe I forgot to show you how to play the sounds. Um, so I'll show, show you how to code the sounds in to the uh, ball and the bricks, or blocks, sorry. So let's start by doing the sounds quickly. I need to go over to my objects, find the ball, um, and every time the ball hits either the paddle or the wall, it needs to make a sound. So we're going to start with the wall. That's actually good. I had some comment in here. I can take the comment out. And the code that we need to add is fairly simple. It's just a one-liner. Audio play sound. So this takes a uh, sound file, a priority, which is how important it is to play the sound, and then whether we want the sound to be repeating or looping or not. Um, so the sound I want to play for hitting the wall is, um, where's my sounds? Sound bounce. So SND bounce. The priority is 100. I want to make sure the sound plays at all times. And then looping would be false. I do not want this to loop. I'm going to copy this. So control C, move over onto my paddle. Or my, sorry, my collision, my collision event was my paddle and place the same code in there. Perfect, so I've got that set up. And then, close that, I'm gonna move over to my block. And in the collision event of the block and the paddle, sorry, the block and the ball, I'm going to, before I destroy it, I'm going to play the sound, but, I'm, but instead I'm going to play, play the other sound, which is block. Okay, so that's how you play sounds. It's a, it's a one-liner. Um, you do have to know where you're playing it. Be, be careful not to like play you know a million times. For example, never put a, a play sound event or play, play sound function into a step event because then you'd be playing the same sound 60 times per second. Um, so just be careful where you're putting these uh, audio play sound functions. But that is how you, how you play a sound. Okay, so that's all done. The last thing we were going to do was create some rooms. So we do have one room, R level one. And we've placed the paddle in here from a previous video. So let's build this room out now. So let's, let's add the walls, let's add some bricks, let's add the ball, and let's add the game controller. So um, let's start with the walls. I know my walls are 16 by 16, so they're very small. Uh, they're way smaller than these blocks up here. So this grid system currently is set up to be 32 pixels by 32. That's not going to work for my uh, walls, so I'm going to change this to 16 by 16. And I'm making sure that snap is kept on. This means that my objects will snap to these uh, points on the grid. Um, when you're building a game, into, especially a 2D game, it's very helpful to have a grid. Once I've got that all done, I'm going to drag. So all I'm doing is I'm clicking, holding the mouse button, and I'm dragging this object onto my screen. Um, you can see it's, it takes up one tiny block. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I said I'm drawing it specifically one color so that I can stretch it. If, if you were if you had individual bricks and you wanted to place them all along the wall you could place a bunch of these or if it's just one color place one hover the mouse over the edge of it kind of like when it turns into two arrows and then you can drag so now I can drag it all the way to the top there we go put one over here switch to it and drag it across the top and then put one more here and drag it all the way down. And there we go. So we've got we've got the walls. Perfect. Now let's place the wall, the ball. So we're gonna grab the ball and place it kind of like right there. Um, ah, so once again, rolling the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, and also holding the control button when I'm when I'm rolling it. I don't like this. There's a gap between the ball and the um, paddle. So I'm going to turn off the grid for a second by pressing the snap to grid button. And now when I select the ball, I can move it more precisely. So I'm just going to move it as close as I can, kind of like there. Hopefully that works. Let's turn the grid back on. So I've got the paddle, I've got the ball, I've got the walls. Now I just need to place the game controller. So this will show my lives, so I do want it to be kind of out of the way. That's a good spot, I think. I might place it more up to the corner. 
And last thing I need is bricks, so or blocks. So let's go over here. Let's drag some blocks. I do like the spacing. Maybe I don't. Let's just see what this looks like. Um, I kind of want them to be closer together. So what I can do is I can go back to my grid again, change the horizontal grid to be smaller, something like eight. Now I, at this point I can't see it unless I zoom in. Now I can place them closer together. So you can see I can go like this. Now a trick is if you have something highlighted in your resources and you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, then you can simply just place it quicker. And once you've placed a few of them, there's, here's another trick. Hold down the Shift key on the keyboard click and drag your mouse to highlight all of them. Then press Control C, just like you're copying anything else in Windows or on a Mac. Control V to paste, and now you've got a whole bunch of them. And I can place way more. So I've got, maybe add one more on this side. Yeah, I think that's decent enough. Then I can highlight all of these. Control C, Control V. I can kind of place them I do want to place them closer, so I'm going to change the grid on the Y axis to be 8 as well. And now I can place these closer. There we go. And let's place a few more. Once again, to speed up the process, I'm going to highlight all of them. Control C, Control V. And I can paste a whole bunch. Just like that. And just like that, my level 1 is done. Um, then we can test it. So at this point, this is all ready to go. I press the play button. Oh, and of course, here is our first error. So what is it saying? The game controller in the step event, so this is telling me that the game controller in the step event on line one in the, this conditional that I wrote is giving me an error. The variables that it's trying to read, which are game over, that's the first one that comes up. So it didn't even get to the second part. It's got to the first part. It's saying it's not set before reading it. So it's trying to find a variable which doesn't exist. And that's because the room does not exist. The game over room does not exist. So to make things simple, I'm going to right click on here, um, duplicate. Let's call this our game over. Um, what do you want? So game over room, double clicking it. I'm going to delete all the blocks. I'm going to delete this. Um, yeah, I'm going to add a wall, not a sprite, a object wall down here. I'm just going to fix these corners here so it looks better. There, so I've kind of contained the whole room in here. Um, the game controller I can leave there. I actually need to leave it there because it has the code for restarting the game. And then in here, I think I could use I could use walls. So I could use something. I could put a wall in here. I could actually hold down the Alt key and kind of like write. write something like GG. Copy paste, made a copy of it, GG. That means game, good game, or game over. I think this needs to go up just one spot. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing, game over. I'm going to duplicate this room, call it our win. And the win room I'm going to delete all of this, select the object wall again, and I'm going to write So once again, this is not an artist version, so this is like very quick and easy. Um, you could actually draw something in as a sprite <clears throat> and bring the sprite in so it looks better. Um, maybe I should say you win. There we go. That's horrible, but this is it. So this says you win. The other one says game over. And of course we have the level here. And now if I play the game, um, before I play it again, I do want to highlight that there's a little 
house next to my room level one. That means that that's the first room that the game enters. Um, you can rearrange these if you'd like. Can you? I guess you cannot. So you can't rearrange them. So if you, if you do click here, then you can rearrange the order of the rooms. So you can put rooms below or above and so forth. Um, I want this one to be the first room. <clears throat> now if we play the game. Perfect, it's on the other screen here. You can see this moves around, the ball follows the paddle. There's sound effects. And there we go, that is the game. Um, I'm not gonna go through destroying all these blocks, or maybe I should. Maybe I should, just so that, uh... no, I'm not gonna do it. I'll show you guys a quick way of doing this. So, when you're testing, you should not waste time playing your game for many, many minutes. So I'm leave one block. And I want to see if um, if this works. So we left one block, launched straight up. And what happened? The game controller should have taken us to the next room. So it should have, should have taken us to the winning room. Let's try again. There we go. You win. And I'm gonna try, sorry. Let's try one more time. So I'm gonna lose on purpose. So there's one life con. You can see that my life's counting down. And once again, it should have taken me to game over, but it did not, so why not? So confused right now. I have a feeling that I am in, in the game over room. It's just not showing up properly. to try one more time. It's very interesting. 
I'm not sure what's going on right now. Debugging is a huge part of game development. So let's see what other functions work. So, so if I'm in this other room, okay, so it does restart the room. Weird. So the fact that this disappears and the paddle disappears is telling me that I'm in a different room. Yeah, like this is a completely different room. But for some reason, okay, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna restart my whole, whole game maker. I think uh, there may be a glitch where changes you make to the room do not get saved. Let's just open the project. Let's just double check these rooms. Yes, so as you can see, for some reason, I made those changes to my room and now I'm looking at it and those changes were not saved. So it was switching rooms. It was just not taking me to the, it was not saving the room properly. Um, so I'll just quickly remake this room. Let's just write the GG in the middle here. And now if we play again, hopefully now it's saved. Um, I have seen this bug before in Game Maker. This happens to simply just, I guess, restart your project. There you go, this time it worked. So that is it, that is the completed game. All done. Um, we'll end the tutorial series here. I will actually not show you how to publish this as a uh, game. I will do a lesson in the future on how to publish games, uh, but not for this game, not at the moment, because this has already been a very long series. Um, and I was hopefully trying to keep them shorter. Uh, so I'll see you guys on Monday, if you're in my class. And we'll talk about maybe adding extra features or if you have any questions. And we'll go from there. Thank you for watching.